Good morning everyone. Welcome to this third lecture of module 6. In this lecture, we will discuss another chemical conversion process that is green diesel synthesis from biobase, feedstock and its application. Green diesel also called as renewable diesel or hydrotreated vegetable oil is a paraffinic biobase drop in fuel that can be produced by hydro treatment of biobase oils and fats. And the feedstock used in the hydro treatment process is same as that of the feedstock used in the biodiesel synthesis process. Green diesel is composed of straight chain and branch paraffin in the range of C15 to C22 having a chemical structure of CN H2N plus 2 and is free of aromatics, oxygen, sulfur and ashes. The produced green diesel is functionally equivalent to petroleum fuels and the process used for the synthesis of green diesel is fully compatible with existing refineries. So, that means the process which is used for the green diesel synthesis is compatible for integration with the existing refineries. Also, the produce green diesel meet the safety and quality standards of internal combustion engine from light to heavy duty and the produce green diesel has higher quality than biodiesel and that is mainly due to lack of oxygen in its composition and also it possesses properties similar to that of the petrol diesel. And the first commercial scale hydro treatment plant with capacity of this much ton per year, it is started in 2007 at Finland and this technology is branded as Next BTL technology and it is very popular technology for the conversion of biobase oils and fats into green diesel. And this schematic here, it represents the hydro treatment process to obtain green diesel. The hydro treatment of liquid biobase feedstock is a common refinery technique and as we know the feedstock used in this process is a liquid feedstock and the only technology that has overcome all the limitation of liquid biobase material as a feedstock for the fuel production and this is the only technology which overcomes this limitation of conversion of this liquid biobase feedstock to fuel and the H by C ratio in this process is increased with removal of moisture and oxygen. In the hydro treatment process, the first step is the pretreatment step and it is generally used for the removal of impurities from the liquid sample followed by hydrogenation through the contact between the triglycerides and hydrogen and the hydrogen used in this process is in excess and it is generally carried out at temperature range of 350 to 450 degrees Celsius and pressure around 4 to 15 mega Pascal using a heterogeneous catalyst. And the feedstock which is used in this process mostly contains the triglycerides because the feedstock used in this process are mostly a oil and fats. So, the oils and fats are mostly consist of the triglyceride and FFA. So, the triglyceride which is present in the liquid feedstock reacts with the hydrogen and the hydrogen which is used in this process it is in the excess and this is the hydrogen feed line to the reactor here and this entire reaction is carried out at relatively higher temperature and pressure between 4 to 15 mega Pascal with the help of heterogeneous catalyst and followed by that the hydrogenolysis step that is also called as a propane cleave is performed by inserting more hydrogen to break this glycerol 
compound and resulting in the propane and chain of free fatty acids. Followed by that three reactions are performed simultaneously in this process that is called as a decarboxylation reaction. D carbonylation reaction and hydro deoxygenation reaction and these reactions are performed simultaneously to form the desired straight chain alkanes during this process. And after the hydro treatment reaction, the product enters a gas liquid separation chamber here, where the gas in these sections are separate out and the gas are mostly consist of hydrogen, H2S, carbon monoxide, CO2, C3H8 and CH4 along with the NH3. And there are also liquid byproduct mainly consist of the organic liquids and water and the production of this liquid product mainly varies with the process and the feedstock used for the hydro treatment process. Recycling some gaseous product is a common technique to improve the yield and the efficiency of this particular process. The liquid product obtained here in the separation chamber follows the last stage that is a fractionation where it is fractionated and yield hydrocarbons of different ranges such as light gas, bio naphtha, bio jet fuel and green diesel. So, here the light gases range from C1 to C4, naphtha range from C5 to C11, bio jet fuels range from C8 to C15 and the diesel like fuel range from C12 to C22. And this schematic here it shows the different thermochemical routes that are available to reach paraffinic green diesel and the different biomass class suitable for the each conversion pathway. So, if you see here these are the different biomass class suitable for the conversion to produce paraffinic diesel and this schematic also it provides information on the different thermochemical processes to upgrade the different biomass liquefied sample such as liquefied crude oil, pyrolysis bio oil and the liquid fuel produced through Fischer-Tropsch synthesis process that is Fischer-Tropsch waxes. So, if you look at this particular chart, the oils and fats containing biobased feedstock after pretreatment can be hydrated to produce green diesel. Similarly, the waste oils and the fats after pretreatment operation that means after removing the impurities can be hydrotated to produce green diesel. However, when the high moisture containing solid biomass is used as a feedstock, then this particular biomass first converted using the hydrothermal liquefaction process which produces liquefied crude oil as a product and this liquefied crude oil can further be upgraded using this hydro treatment process to produce green diesel. So, this is another advantage of this particular process here. The liquefied crude oil obtained after the hydrothermal liquefaction process can further be upgraded using this hydro treatment process to produce green diesel and hence this particular process can also be considered as a upgradation process to convert the various feedstock into green diesel. Similarly, solid biomass with relatively low moisture content feedstock if it is being used for the conversion operation, then it can first be pyrolyzed to produce the pyrolysis bio oils and the produced bio oil can be upgraded using this hydrothermal process or this biomass can be gasified first and can convert it into a liquid fuel through Fischer-Tropsch synthesis process and then produce liquid fuel other Fischer-Tropsch axis can be upgraded using this hydro treatment process to produce green diesel. Likewise, different routes are available to reach paraffinic renewable diesel. 
So, as discussed in the previous slide, the feedstock used to produce green diesel are same as used for the biodiesel synthesis process and it includes edible vegetable oils, tree born non edible oils, waste oils and fats and oleaginous microorganisms. Oleaginous microorganisms in the sense the microorganisms which contains lipids. So, the lipid produced from this oleaginous microorganism can also be used as a feedstock for the green diesel synthesis. The reason for selection this kind of feedstock material for the green diesel synthesis is the bio based oils and fats are ideal sources as they have chemical structure having long chain fatty acids with C16 to C24 carbon atom in its composition and the uses of such renewable bio based feedstock as a fuel source have many advantages in the sense stable supply of raw material, reduction in the carbon footprint from the uses of this liquid fuels and also profitable agriculture economy. And as we discussed before, the first step in the hydro treatment process to obtain this green diesel is generally a pretreatment step that is basically the pretreatment of the oil to remove the impurities. So, if the oil contains certain impurities because as we mentioned earlier the waste oils as well as the animal fats are also used as a feed material for this particular process. So, the waste which is present in the oil can be removed using this pretreatment operation and these pretreatment operations are same as that of the operation used in the biodiesel synthesis process. And after this pretreatment the pretreated oil can be used as a feed for the hydro treatment process. So, what is hydro treatment that is also termed as hydro processing. So, the hydro treatment of the bio based oils and fats it refers to the chemical reaction of triglycerides. So, as we are discussing mostly on the feed material as oils and fats. So, these oils and fats contains triglycerides and free fatty acids. So, during this hydro treatment process these oils and fats that means the triglycerides and free fatty acids reacts with hydrogen and the hydrogen also used in this process it is in excess and this reaction is carried out at around 300 to 450 degree Celsius and pressure 4 to 15 mega Pascal using a heterogeneous catalyst to produce liquid hydrocarbon fuel. And the advantage of this process is it produces liquid hydrocarbon fuel which has properties similar to that of the petrol diesel. And the catalyst used in this process is a sulfided mild acid catalyst such as nickel molybdenum aluminum oxide. So, this is support cobalt molybdenum this is also support here or nickel tungsten with alumina oxide and these are the most commonly used catalysts for the hydro treatment process and this sulfidation this is required because then it generates the active sites on the catalyst. And the another advantage of this hydro treatment process is it has lot of similarities with the existing process used in the petroleum refineries. In the conventional petroleum refineries hydro processing unit is used to process the various petroleum distillates to form transportation fuels. And due to involvement of the common catalyst as well as the hydro processing route the production of this green diesel this can be integrated in the existing refinery facilities and that is what is the advantage of this process as I mentioned that it has lot of similarities with the existing hydro processing unit in the conventional petroleum refineries. So, it can be easily integrated in the existing refinery facility. So, during this hydro treatment process as mentioned earlier as well it uses excess amount of hydrogen and it saturates the double bonds present in the feedstock and also eliminates 
heteroatoms from triglycerides or free fatty acid molecule through various mechanism to provide range of hydrocarbon fuels and it produces hydrocarbon fuel such as light gases bio naphtha in the range of c5 to c11 bio jet fuels c8 to c15 and green diesel that is in the range of c12 to c22 along with this it also produces the by product which includes water and cox that is carbon monoxide or co2 and this bio naphtha which is termed as a light fuel it form at the condition of high temperature and high pressure and strong acidic catalyst and the support that promote the hydrocaking reaction similarly the green diesel that is termed as a heavy fuel form at the condition that promote mainly hydro treatment although the hydrocaking may also be used to a limited extent to cause the isomerization of the hydrocarbon that is called as a branching of the paraffins so during this isomerization operation it produces branch paraffins so during this process the h by c ratio increased and the oxygen and the moisture are completely removed so as we mentioned earlier the oxygens are completely removed during this particular hydro treatment process and here the conversion of the feed is around 100% and the volumetric yield of the hydrocarbon product is significantly high however the selectivity to diesel boiling range paraffin is also very high during the hydro treatment process and the paraffin range here is c15 to c22 as we mentioned earlier and the product carbon number distribution and the selectivity of the product is controlled by choice of the catalyst as well as the reaction conditions even this green diesel yield also varies from 88% to about 99% that is on the volume basis and it is all depends on the level of the hydro isomerization reaction which is required to achieve product cloud point specification if the product cloud point specification need to be of specific value then the level of isomerization need to be controlled during the reaction so that it can achieve product cloud point of certain specification and that is the another advantage of the hydro isomerization process where it can lead to a production of specific quality fuel so now let us move on to the hydro treatment reaction mechanism so as we discussed earlier this hydro treatment process it involves the conversion of triglycerides and free fatty acids to paraffinic diesel through various step as presented in the following scheme in hydro treatment process the first step is generally the pre treatment of the oil to remove the impurities and once the impurities are removed the pre treated oil is used for the hydro treatment process in which the hydrogenation of the pre treated oil is carried out in presence of excess hydrogen at relatively high pressure and the temperature and it gives saturated triglycerides and fatty acids subsequently hydrogenolysis is performed by inserting more hydrogen to break this glycerol compounds and resulting in propane and a chain of free fatty acids so this particular process is also called as propane cleave process and followed by that three reactions are performed simultaneously to form a desired straight chain alkanes that is d carboxylation reaction d carbonylation reaction and hydrodeoxygenation 
reaction and it forms straight chain alkanes as a product and all these three reactions are performed simultaneously in the process and followed by that is a hydrocaking it also be used to a limited extent to cause the isomerization of the product to form the branch chain hydrocarbon that is isoalkanes and that is also called as paraffin diesel so in this case now if you look at this hydrogenation reaction so hydrogenation is a catalytic chemical reaction in which the hydrogen is added usually to an unsaturated organic compound so during this reaction the triglycerides and the fatty acid containing partially unsaturated aliphatic chains converts into a saturated aliphatic chains and this undergoes the saturation by the hydrogenation through the contact with hydrogen and hydrogen used here it is in excess at relatively high temperature and pressure in the presence of heterogeneous catalyst as we discussed earlier and this hydrogenation it takes place at around 100 to 150 degree celsius pressure around 10 to 30 bar and causing the saturation of the double bonds over the metal catalyst such as ruthenium platinum palladium and nickel so specific catalyst of choice need to be selected for this operation to achieve product cloud point specification so next is the hydrogenolysis reaction so it is a catalytic chemical reaction that breaks chemical bond in the organic molecule so in the previous reaction so in this case the unsaturation in the aliphatic undergoes the hydrogenation reaction to produce saturated compounds whereas in this case it breaks the chemical bond in the organic molecule with the simultaneous addition of more hydrogen atom and resulting in the formation of molecular fragments and this hydrogenolysis also called as a propane cleave as we discuss just one slide before it occurs in the presence of hydrogen causing the selective cleavage of these bonds of specific molecules like glycerols triglycerides to form propane and free fatty acids and this process takes place under alkaline condition or supported metal catalyst the catalyst as mentioned before the same catalyst can be used during this process and followed by that is the deoxygenation reaction in which the oxygen is removed from the triglyceride molecule and this reaction is commonly termed as selective deoxygenation reaction and further be classified into the reaction of hydro deoxygenation decarbonylation and decarboxylation three deoxygenation reaction that is hydro deoxygenation decarbonylation and decarboxylation reactions these reactions are performed simultaneously to form the desired straight chain alkanes and if you recollect we just discussed this in the hydro treatment reaction mechanism so these three reactions are performed simultaneously to produce desired alkanes and here this decarboxylation and decarbonylation reactions are commonly referred as decox reaction now let us see this decarbonylation reaction first in decarbonylation reaction the oxygen molecules are removed as co and h2o so if you see this reaction here during this reaction the oxygen molecules are removed in the form of carbon monoxide and h2o and it forms desired alkane as a product 
and the saturated hydrocarbon produced has one carbon atom less than the parent fatty acid chain in the triglyceride. Similarly, in the decarboxylation reaction, the oxygen molecules are removed, but it is removed in the form of carbon dioxide. And in this process, the decarboxylation route does not consume hydrogen, but on the other hand, it has a lower atom economy and produces liquid N alkanes and CO2 as a product where it removes the oxygen from the feed material. And here in this case also the saturated hydrocarbon produced as one carbon atom which is less than the parent fatty acid chain in the triglycerides. So, next is the hydro deoxygenation reaction and it is performed at high pressure and temperature in which the oxygen is eliminated by the catalytic reaction with hydrogen. As we discussed before, the upgradation of the bio oil also proceeds mainly through hydro deoxygenation process in which the oxygen in the feed is eliminated by the catalytic reaction with hydrogen and as we know bio oil contains significant amount of the oxygen. So, once this oxygen is removed from the bio oil through this hydro deoxygenation reaction then it produces literally a high quality product. And the mild acidic supports have the potential to break this bond in the fatty acids at temperature even less than 350 degree Celsius and these are basically act as a support in the catalyst and even the mild acidic support have this potential to break this bond in the fatty acid. And then it produces the desired alkane and releases oxygen in the form of water. Followed by the deoxygenation reaction is the hydroisomerization of the produced alkanes because the deoxygenation of triglyceride it produces the green diesel consisting mainly of the normal saturated hydrocarbons in the range of C12 to C22. And these hydrocarbons they have high certain number but possesses poor cold flow properties and the freezing point is even greater than 15 degree Celsius. And because of that reason the hydro isomerization is carried out to convert this normal saturated hydrocarbons into branch chain isomers with lower freezing point. And that is what is termed as branch chain paraffins. The hydromerization of this green diesel may lower the freezing point below even minus 10 degree Celsius, but during this process it may decrease the certain number from 100 to 70. But in case if the product of specific quality or the specification need to be produced then such small alternate arrangement need to be performed to produce this green diesel. Followed by that is the product separation and the purification operation as we discussed in the schematic of hydro treatment process. So, once the hydro treatment process or reaction is over then the products enter the chamber of gas liquid separation and the gases found in these sections are mostly the gases as listed here and recycling of some of these gaseous byproduct is common technique to improve the process yield and its efficiency. And it also produces liquid byproduct mainly organic acids and water which vary with the processes and the feedstock used during the hydro treatment operation. And the last stage in the process is fractionation where it yield hydrocarbon of different ranges such as light gases, bio naphtha, bio jet fuels and green diesel. And this table here it depicts the fuel properties of the green diesel 
and its comparison with the other fuels including biodiesel. So, in this case the density range of the green diesel is between 0 0.77 to 0 0.83 which is in acceptable range with that of the diesel and even biodiesel. Green diesel has a flash point of 68 to 120 degree Celsius thus it is safe for handling and storage. Green diesel is a new biofuel which however is currently produced in industrial scale. Similarly, the oxidation stability of the green diesel is greater than even 22 hour which is much better than the biodiesel. The CTN number of green diesel ranges between 80 to 99 which is much high compared to even standard diesel and hence it is rendering it a competitive diesel substitute. Even its net heating value is between 42 to 44 which is almost similar to that of the conventional diesel and even higher than the biodiesel. Overall these fuel characteristics of the green diesel are compatible with the fossil diesel and even superior to that of the biodiesel and hence rendering it a competitive diesel substitute. So, these are the references which you can refer to know more in detail about the green diesel synthesis process. So, this is all about green diesel synthesis from the biobased fish stock. So, the next lecture that will be the first lecture of module 7 will discuss origin and composition of solid fuels, properties of coal, coal classification, properties and storage of coal, coal carbonization, gasification and liquefaction process. Thank you.